Hello, everyone. It's Tiffany Bryant Jackson, Education Manager of Three Bone Theater. And today we have a fantastic conversation coming your way. We are going to talk with the playwright of our upcoming show. She's taken some time to talk to us a little bit today, but Unlike other times, she will also be in the building with us on May 14th. So this is just a little bit of convo. And if you want more, make sure you have your tickets to the 14th because you're going to want that. Hi, Kelly. How are you? I'm well, thanks. How are you? I am fantastic. I am so happy that we get to chat a little bit today. I'm going to start with saying I love your show. Oh, I think it's you. fantastic. As soon as I saw it in our lineup and I read it every, there are so many pieces of it that were here. And I was like, oh. yes, yes. Oh, that means a lot. And I think our audience here in Charlotte is going to love it just as much. It speaks to so many people and so many experiences that many people have had. So I, my first question is what motivated you to write this show? Oh, well, so it's interesting because originally I was asked uh, to, to share a story uh, by my friend Keith Joseph Atkins at New Black Fest. And I was like, but I'm not a comedian type person. And he was like, please, Kelly, you have tons of stories. And I went and I, I, I was trying to come up with a story and I figured a lot of the stories would be funny, but also some were going to be really moving. And I I hadn't really done anything in that sort of kind of moth storytelling vein. So I was really, really nervous. And he was just like, tell a story from here. And so I decided to publicly tell a story I had never shared publicly before, which was about the time that I was up for one of the biggest meetings of my career back when I was still a broadcast journalist. I, it was actually, um, I got a call from from my agent saying that uh, the president of a major network had been following my career and wanted to meet with me. And it really is like, you know, the Cinderella scene in a movie, right? Where you've had this career and you've been working and waiting and dreaming and you get the call that's going to change your life. And then she said, I, and I was like, are you serious? Are you serious? And she said, I'm very serious. And I said, oh my gosh. And she said, yeah, this is a big deal. And then she said he had a cancellation for tomorrow morning. So he'll see you at 9 a.m. And what my broadcast agent didn't know is that I had taken my hair extensions out, which is what I would do whenever I was sort of like had some downtime in between mm -hmm. having to be on camera. And so I didn't look like the Kelly Goff, the, this president of a network was expecting. That's not what I look like. So I, I kind of went to the, to the meltdown. Um, that I think a lot of uh, people who are not women of, of color and who are not black women specifically with our, um, our, our unique and fabulous hair texture um, haven't experienced when you have these big moments in life where people are expecting a certain image of who you are. And what they don't realize is that image takes several hours and often lots and lots of money to attain. And so I really did go into meltdown mode because I thought literally this was going to break my career because I had made the decision to take my hair extensions out and I hadn't discussed it with someone, which also sounds crazy, right? right. Having to discuss with an adult what I do with my own hair. So I went to the nearest pharmacy and I literally found one of those ponytails you buy off the shelf and I plopped it onto my head. And I went into the meeting and I remember literally thinking like, don't sneeze, don't tilt your head too far. And this was all of this was just weighing on me when I spent all these years working really, really hard to establish myself as a journalist. And yet that's what was on my mind in this important meeting. And you know what? The meeting went really well. I didn't walk in and he didn't go, where's your hair? Which I think is kind of some somewhat of what I, I was anticipating because of some of the conditioning we all receive. Right. And so that was a real turning point for me, Tiffany. It was a real turning point because- I was like, why have I allowed this to define and dictate so much of my career and my life? Mm -hmm. And so after that, I actually started going on air without my hair extensions. And Love I it. got comments from people, not always kind. Like I got some people who, you know, people who meant well, you know, who would send notes like, hey, listen, your story was great, but what's going on with your hair? It looks so pretty last right. week, you know, that kind of stuff. But I realized like it didn't impact my storytelling. It didn't change who I am. And even though there were people on Twitter who would be like, I can't believe someone let Kelly Goff go on air with her edges looking like that. It didn't change um, my work and it didn't change my um, image of who I am or my self-worth. And so that's 
really telling the story publicly and, and getting the reaction from people of all races and all genders who all could relate to this idea of someone else telling us who we're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And that is where the, the play came from, is that I finished telling that story and literally people were like, you've got to, there's, there's more to this. There's more to this. And that's where the play came from. I love it. I do love that you mentioned the Twitter comment about your edges, because if anyone's been paying attention to pop culture, um, the most celebrated gymnast ever yes. has gotten married and there were comments about her edges. And I'm like, y'all, I know this woman has done phenomenal things in life. She has gotten married in her most comfortable self. Why is that where you go? So it's weird. I'm, to so, glad, I'm so glad you brought that up, though, because I think one of the most important conversations about all of this is it's not just others who hurt us mm -hmm. we can often hurt ourselves and hurt each other and I really want to have that conversation because to be quite honest there were plenty of of white people who were quite critical of, of perhaps things I said on air or they didn't agree with something I wrote but most of my white friends didn't even know what edges were like <laughs> oh, they wouldn't know what a kitchen is they don't know what edges are about right it, it, you know it was it was our own people who were like, who let Kelly Goff go on air with their edges looking like a mess, right? Mm -hmm. And so now we know where that comes from. That comes from yeah. standards set by society, right? And um, and so, but there's work we can do to be kinder to ourselves and to each other. And so when I saw that, I thought the same thing you did. I thought, I can't believe this. Years later, you know, I'm off air and we're still having this beautiful, accomplished, amazing, inspiring Black woman and people are still talking about her edges and and we got to get past that we got to get past that but i love that she you know clapped back as the kids say and she's yes. not going to let anyone ruin her wedding day she looked fabulous she's happy you know and so she was kind of like keep on tweeting y'all love it and i love something you brought up about the work still having to be done i am a firm believer that theater changes lives in various ways and a lot of it is opening conversations that people may not be ready to have or may not have just unpacked on their own so i think this show has that chance to do that it will make you think if you're one of the ones complaining about those edges have I been that person who is making someone conform? Uh, have I touched someone's hair without having permission? And so I think this is a great conversation starter. And I, I think I'm noting that this is the first full stage production that we, we are getting to see that's going to premiere here in Charlotte. Is that correct? It is correct. And it's actually the first time I've, I've ever seen a performance in person because of the pandemic. Oh, I so, love this. So excited. I'm so, so excited. And I am happy about that because I think, like I said, sometimes people don't know they need that conversation or they don't know that they need to unpack something that is, you said, ingrained in us. It's, listen, I am a Black woman from the South and I can tell you all the conversations about how my hair was supposed to be until I let that go in my 30s. It took me to my 30s to be like, I hate it here. <laughs> I don't want to sit in the salon chair uh, and what it's just not the comfortable place. So I am glad you're bringing this. Now, if an audience member is going to see this show before you get in on the 14th and they say they see it in the first weekend, what's something you want them to take home? Oh, that's a great question. Let me see if I can come up with an even good answer for that. That's a great question. Um, Ooh, my lights. I'm here. I have a weird one. Okay. <laughs> that was fun. That was spooky. Um, I think um, it's, it's touching upon what you just said when you were framing this question, which is self-reflection, because we can all do better. It's, what's the, the Oprah expression, you know, once when you, you know, know better, better. You do better. And mm -hmm. we've all had those moments where we said, right. And we've all had those moments where we've said something or done something that's hurtful to um, someone when it comes to these impossible standards of beauty that none of us set, right? And right. so I think that's what I'd like for people to take away is I think one of the problems we're having in our society in terms of the political divisiveness is that no one's hands are clean. And a lot of people start every conversation from this idea that this person's all wrong, I'm all right, and I'm here mm -hmm. to educate someone on how they can be more right like me. 
And yet every single one of us has work to do. And so I think that's one of the real takeaways for the play is there's a particular scene in there set in an office, which I know you know, but it was so interesting how many letters and emails I got from people about that particular scene. And I think because it speaks to this idea that even those of us who mean well are still have baggage we carry and what work can we do after we see a play like this to try to unpack some of that baggage that that's really what i hope people walk away from the play even if they say i didn't recognize myself in that i didn't recognize myself in that scene either but that conversation you know that hit a little close to home and i need to think about that what i said to my granddaughter what i've said to my daughters um what i've said to my sisters you know um, yes so yeah i think that's what i'm hoping people will do once they see it that's a good takeaway. And I will let you know on something we do at Three Bone Theater is we, there's a discussion guide created for every show that we do. So we want people to not stop when they leave the theater. So the discussion guide not only shares uh, questions to ask yourself to do some unpacking, uh, you know, simple as did you even know that it was still legal in some states for people to discriminate against hair? Mm -hmm. But it also has recommendations for documentaries to watch, movies to see, books That's to great. read. So I hope, I just want you to know that we make sure our audience leaves not with just the message you put in the show, but with, with a little work that they can do at home so the conversation keeps going. That's awesome. We try. We try. Um, I don't want to take up too much more of your time because I am going to get to talk to you on the 14th and this this is going to be a good conversation. So I'm saying to everyone watching this on YouTube, do not miss the genius of Kelly Goff coming into oh. our space. Watching a first full production of a fantastic show that will make you think hard on yourself on your environments and just some things that we all need to unpack. You're absolutely right, Kelly, when you say no one's hands are clean. And the sooner we realize that, the better. Um, is there anything you want to leave the people watching this today with before they come and see the show? Oh, you have such good questions. I should have been <laughs> like, you. Um, can I tell you, I'm just so excited to see it myself and I'm just hoping I can keep it together and not, you know, be like a sobbing mess the whole production because the stories I'm telling are, are stories from my family, the family of friends, the families of women I've crossed paths with in hair salons, the stories of, you know, women I've just crossed paths with in my life. And I have to tell you what I'm most excited about is the conversations that will take place afterwards, Tiffany, because I was really quite overwhelmed by people I even know personally who reached out to me after seeing the play wow. and of uh, brought back for them of things they hadn't talked about within their own families, um, mm -hmm. comments people had made to them that they didn't realize were hurtful. Um, I've reflected on things, you know, I've heard, I heard as a child growing up. And so yes. I think what I'm, I'm, I'm really, um, I don't want to say excited for, but the, you know, one of the terms that one of the actors in your production, I'm so thrilled to, to meet the cast over zoom they talked about, um, you know, the healing power of art and theater and that there are pieces in this play that touch them. And so I'm, that's what I'm, I'm most excited about is I hope people really are able to, um, to, you know, find some solace in some of these pieces. That's my hope. Put a healing balm on the soul. Yeah. I, I love know. it. Well, for anyone catching us on YouTube, do not forget to get your tickets and come see this show. Get them now and get them fast because I have a feeling this one will sell out. So you don't want to miss it. We don't want to get a message from you saying, oh, no, I thought I'm telling you now. Go ahead and get your tickets and secure them. Um, it's going to be a fantastic show. And if you want to be in the warmth of Kelly herself, you can be there on the 14th um, during our Mother's Day performance of the show. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you, Kelly, for giving us some time today so that we can catch a quick chat. I'm excited to see you in person so that we can have a good sit down chat and pretend that the audience is just a part of our living room set and we're just two friends <laughs> catching up. Okay, cool. Thank you.